Urgent manhunt underway right now for a suspected terrorist in France. Author authorities say that a gunman opened fire, killing at least three people and injuring a dozen others. This happened at a busy Christmas market in Strasbourg. The suspected gunman Thank identified by Reuters as Sharif Chakot. He was already known to authorities and he was on their watch list. He was shot during a shootout with police but reportedly hijacked a taxi and he got away. Here to weigh in is former Deputy Commanding General of U.S. Forces in Afghanistan, General Anthony Tata. Thank you very much for joining us. We certainly appreciate having you with us. Thank you, Heather. So let's get your response right away to the situation going on there in Strasbourg. Well, Strasbourg is the capital of Christmas. Uh, anyone who's been in that area of Europe knows that since 1570, uh, this is the annual celebration for Strasbourg. It is the area that uh, for people from all over Europe come to celebrate Christmas, and uh, it's got a great tradition. And uh, when you look at the immigration policies that have been happening and the extreme Muslim influence that has uh, crept all throughout Europe and disrupted the societies there, uh, this this conflict, and you're not going to hear it in the mainstream media at all, but this this uh, Strasbourg area has been attacked before, and you're not hearing it being radical Islam, you're, you're hearing it being called a radical, uh, but it will come out sooner or later that he's radical Islam mm -hmm. and has attacked the Christmas market because it's a center of Christianity in the area. And and uh, frankly, Heather, this, this uh, immigration policy of France and all of Europe, with all the all the uh, refugees that they've allowed in, millions that they've allowed in, have disrupted societies all throughout uh, Europe, and yeah. it's not a good thing. And they got to get control of it. I know that you and I have talked about it before when incidents like this That's have right. happened in Europe. Uh, globalism and immigration policies not working, and lessons that we should learn before it happens here. That's right. It, this is globalism. It, you know, it's a high-minded concept uh, for academics, but when you get on the ground, uh, when you've got uh, border police and you've got customs officials that are, are uh, have to enforce the policies, weak policies, just the same thing happening on our border. Uh, when, when you look at what the ICE folks have to deal with, uh, it's, it's overwhelming, and, and there is intent to harm Western society by Islam, and, and we have to accept that, and it's a, it's a Truism that has to be built into policy so that we can strengthen our borders all over uh, the Western world so that we can maintain our freedoms and liberties and our capitalism. And you mentioned that more will come out about this, but we do know, uh, you know, in the report that we had at the top of the show that this terrorist apparently was known to authorities. That, that's right. That's right. He was known. He was on the equivalent of the FBI watch list in France, and uh, he was being watched. And and he he had been attempted to be arrested before. And he comes in and he breaches the the uh, border, uh, the the area that they had uh, roped off for the Christmas market, where there are thousands of people that come there every year to the capital of Christmas. And it's it's a terrible thing that's happened, and and it's uh, systemic though in Europe. When you look at France, uh, 30 terrorist attacks since uh, 2000, just this century, uh, over 80 percent of them have been Islamic extremists mm -hmm. that are a result of the lax border uh, and immigration laws and rules. And speaking of border walls and immigration rules, uh, President Trump yesterday, obviously that was front and center. When you take a look at the meeting that happened publicly with uh, Nancy. Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. He was going on the defense. He said, you know what, one way or the other, we're going to pay for this wall. And he said that he would get the military and the Pentagon to pay for it. Well, you know, I can think of nothing more central to our security, Heather, is that uh, uh, controlling our borders. Uh, it is it is a uh, maxim of every nation state that you have to control who comes in, who who uh, is allowed to become a citizen. There are there are responsibilities with citizenship, and you just can't come in here illegally and expect to be taken care of. And, and but people do, and they are, and and so that's what President Trump is trying to get control of. And 
And so we're very good with the military at disrupting plots overseas, fighting the enemy on their five-yard line, where we're not so great as fighting the enemy on our five-yard line. And we don't want to be fighting them all the time on our mm -hmm. five-yard line, but we have to have a, a goal line defense. And that goal line defense, so to speak, now since it's football season, uh, <laughs> is, is, is the border wall and is and is along the, the uh, Mexican border and, and uh, the Canadian border. Yeah, I mean, it impacts everyone. And why, that's one of the reasons I think that it was a good idea to, you know, to bring those cameras in yesterday and let everybody know what's being said from, from all sides because it does impact everyone. That, that's right. And when you hear, uh, you know, uh, Pelosi and Schumer talk about, well, we want border security, but they're not specific about it and they have no real plan. And the president has a plan and, and he's, he intends to build the wall and using DOD, using our engineers, using our resources to do that, uh, particularly since we've scaled down operations overseas, would be, in my opinion, a wise use of, of the military and, and, our, and its uh, budget. All right, General Tata, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it today.